What's up YouTube? My name's Neil and today I'm going to show you how to take a 3D object and put it into the new Adobe After Effects CC without even rendering. Stay tuned. So Adobe a few months back released their next line of applications. Now instead of calling it Adobe CS7, they decided to call it Adobe CC, which stands for Creative Cloud. Now along with the release of the new Adobe CC, they introduced a renting system, which is actually pretty cool. $75 gets you a month-to-month -month basis and access to all the Adobe programs. If you want to sign up for a year, it drops down to 50 bucks a month. If you're already a pre-existing Adobe member and have any previous version of the CS Suites, it's actually only $30 a month. What actually going to look at today is Adobe After Effects CC. Now, one of the coolest things that they've finally done is that they've actually integrated the ability to take a 3D model from Cinema 4D and import it directly into After Effects without having to actually render it out. Now, another cool thing that comes with After Effects CC is that it comes with Cinema 4D Lite, so you don't have to own a copy of Cinema 4D, which is a really expensive program. So a quick breakdown on what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna take some footage, motion track it in After Effects, bring it into Cinema 4D, we're gonna take a 3D object and drop it in, and then we're gonna bring it back to After Effects and work with it and render it out there. So let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we're gonna be doing today. So as you can see here, we have some 3D elements tracked into our live footage, and uh, they're placed pretty well. Um, I do have this one a little bit forward um, if you moved it back, you can actually see that it stays in place. And things look pretty cool. So let's go ahead and open up After Effects. Okay, so we are here in After Effects. Um, I have previously tracked my footage um, just to help save time. So uh, basically, if you don't know how to do that, it's pretty simple. Just come over here, grab your footage. Drop it into a new comp. Come over to here to where it says, I type in 3D camera tracker. Bring it over, drop it on. It'll automatically do its thing. But we're not going to do that because we've already done that. Uh, so let's go ahead and delete this. So we have our tracked footage. As you can see here by all of the points. So what we want to do first is kind of try and find an area that looks like it matches your um, level of the plane that you have for your ground. Um, I'm going to turn this up just a little bit so we can actually see it. Uh, let's take this up to 350. So when we come in here we can actually kind of see it. So we want to try our best that looks pretty good. So once you do that, you can click on it, or just right click, uh, come on down, and then you want to say set ground plane and origin. So what that does is that that means that that's the origin, that's going to be the level once we bring it into Cinema 4D. Then the next thing we want to do, go ahead and click off that, click back, is we want to come over here and find a good point to be able to create a null object and camera. So let's do that. That looks good. So you right-click again, you just say Create Null and Camera. So now what we do is that we have our 3D camera that is tracked to our footage. The next thing that we want to do is after we've done all of that, we come over here to File. We say Export. Oops. Make sure you're on the actual composition. Export. And you say Maxon Cinema 4D Exporter. Now what this does is this takes all that information that we just added to the composition and puts it in a Cinema 4D format. So we click on that. We'll name this. And I already had one previously in there, but we'll just overwrite that. So we'll call it Camera Track. See how it saves it, Cinema 4D. You say Save. Then it doesn't show up here at all. What we have to do is re-import it. So we have our camera track and our camera track. I think that's the one I just did. 
right? Now we have our Cinema 4D file. So what's really cool is that now it's actually in here. Before, if you tried it with CS6 or any other previous version, it just wouldn't come in. Um, it would give you an error message saying you can't read this, da-da-da-da-da. But now we have the ability to actually drop it in. But we're not done. So we're going to select it, come over here to Edit, and say Edit Original. So you click on that. Now I know I said earlier that it comes with Cinema 4D Lite. Um, what I have here is actually broadcast. Now if you already own a version of Cinema 4D, it's going to open that on up. If you don't, then it's going to go ahead and open up Cinema 4D Lite. So then I'm going to come here. What I like to do is I come, I like to come do Scale Project. And I'll bring this down to 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Change this to meters and meters. And I do this mainly because a lot of the times uh, projects will come in and it will be actually really, really, really far away. If you see right there, that's actually the null object we created. So I'm going to say that. Now, what I want to do is I want to bring in some assets. So you can model something on your own using the NURBS or polygons, however you like it. I'm just going to bring in some previously made um, models. So you come up to File, Merge. Now, I have a lamp post here that we saw earlier. I'm going to go ahead and bring that in. I'm going to tell that to say 5. I'm going to say OK. Now, for whatever reason, sometimes it just likes to drop them in some strange places. So I'm just going to bring this over. Whoops. We want to uh, group these so we can move it all as one. I'm just going to bring this over. Scale it down a bit. Drop it down. Now I'm just going to put it a little bit off camera so that when we play it, we don't see it, and then the camera turns, and hey, look, we have a lamppost right in front of our face. Actually, I'm going to move that back a little bit. All right. So, we're still not done here. Let's go ahead and put that helicopter in. We'll come back up here to say Merge. I have this RAH66. I'm not going to do any animation. Um, just going to kind of try and drive this point home. Uh, let's make that two. Say OK. Brought that in really small. So we're going to group it together again. No one and scale it up. Maybe not that big. Now we'll be about that big. I'm going to move this over, bring this up, rotate it, rotate it again. So now we have our helicopter in our scene as well. So everything's looking really good. I'm just going to go ahead and toss this on there just so it looks like something. Let's do that. All right. So now that part's done. I know I left these here, but you know, we won't talk about that. So then all you do is you come over here and you just say save. And it's now saved it under that original name. Remember, Camarilla track. We come back to After Effects. Now we can get rid of this 3D camera and this null object because we don't need it anymore. Now all we need to do is just take this, drop it down, and bam. We have that now in our scene and we didn't have to render out of Cinema 4D. How freaking awesome is that? If you see if we scrub through, we have our light post, which the material is really nice because you can see right through it. So you can see the stuff behind it. Keep coming to the end here. And you see everything stays in place. Now, 
over here in the Cineware by Maxon settings, it shows a couple little different things here. One of the things right here is render. And what that does, software render is pretty much a very, very, very uncompressed, or sorry, not uncompressed, a very um, stripped down version of it, makes it easy to work with and see things. So if you need to uh, play it out, you can and make changes. Um, you know, it's a lot easier to see that uh, before uh, you decide to try and do a final render. If you click on draft, it kind of gives you a draft mode. So you see that the grid will disappear. So it gives you kind of an idea of how um, it's going to look. And then if you come over here to standard final, it's going to show you the final quality of it. Let's go ahead and put this on full. So that's how it's going to look um, all together overall. One thing I want to make sure to mention as well is the fact that you cannot move anything here that's within After Effects. So you see how it says max on Cinema 40 layer size must match composition and use default transform values. Let's go ahead and undo that. So and the reason being is because each of these are, even though they're individual objects, it's seeing it as one file. It's kind of like if you take an After Effects and pre-compose a file, or pre-compose a composition, you can't actually edit anything in that composition unless you open it up. So any changes that you make have to be made in Cinema 4D. Now, what's really cool here is, let's say, you know what? I don't want that lamppost there. I want to move this lamppost. All I have to do is just come back to Cinema 4D. Oops. And I'll click on my null, click on my move, and let's say I'm like, you know what, I kind of want to move this back a little bit. Let's put this lamp post right there. Again, we just come in and say File, Save. Come back to After Effects, give it a second while it updates, and bam, our lamp post has now been moved. So it makes it very convenient when you're trying to work with footage. Um, you can bring in reference material, um, which will help out a lot. Um, but if you're looking to do something really quick and just toss something in, this way is great. And you can make your changes and go back and forth between the two programs and not have to worry about how everything's going to, going to look. So then just to render it out, we come over here and say File, whoops, sorry, Composition, Add to Render Queue over here. Now I do uh, Targa sequences and if you had an alpha channel you can run out the alpha otherwise you're just doing um, RGB format 32 bit. I'll come over here say OK. Give it a name. We're gonna go ahead and say Heli Lamp. And this is going to create a subfolder inside my Cinema 4D AE tutorial. I say save, tell it to say render, and then just sit back and wait. And you only have to render once instead of having to render things in both um, Cinema 4D and then render again once you bring in the After Effects. Now another really cool thing I wanted to mention is let's say we didn't move that lamp. We have this lamp here, right? But we want to put something in between it and the helicopter. Let's actually bring this in front of the helicopter. So what we do is that I can we'll save this. If I come over here and say delete the file save as and I'll call this lamp only lampa lamp only save undo that come over here delete this the file save as heli only say save now if I come back to after effects I'll go ahead and delete this layer here 
now that we have saved different copies of those, what's really cool is that you can take those files and drop them in as well. So we'll come here, take our heli only and the map. Man, I really need to uh, learn to type. So I'll drop my lamp in. You can see that. I'll go ahead and say final. And then I'll drop my heli in. I'll have to go ahead and say final. So now what we've done is that we've pretty much done exactly what we've done with our camera, camera, camera track footage, but now they're on separate planes. So if I wanted to, I could come in here and say layer new solid. We'll make this red, make this bright red. Say OK drop this there oops drop this like that and we'll scale this down make it 3d and now we have separation between our two objects so that's really cool. You can create something in Cinema 4D and then bring it into After Effects. Um, let's go ahead and delete that. So, yeah, guys. So that is the tutorial on how to be able to bring in um, camera track footage from After Effects into Cinema 4D and then back again um, without having to render it in Cinema 4D and then re-render in After Effects. All right, guys, make sure to like and subscribe. Um, definitely, the more uh, support I get, the more I'm going to be able to do these things more often. Um, you guys are great. If you have any questions, again, you can tweet me at, at Neil underscore London. Um, any questions that you have, anything you'd like to see, go ahead. Just let me know, and I will try and get them done for you guys. All right, see you later.